It's that time of the month again. It's time for the latest My Monthly Hero, Hero Arts main kit and add-ons release. Hi everyone, I'm Rebecca Keppel. So in today's video, I'll be sharing the main Hero Arts stamps and dies from the main kit, as well as stamps and dies from the add-ons. As always, there's a lot to get through, so I will just dive into the card making and share the new supplies along the way. So let's start by taking a look at the main kit stamps and dies. This is the main kit's stamp set. It's a large stamp set. It's one of their HeroScape stamps, which means it's a layering stamp set, which allows you to create these beautiful detailed flamingos. And the dies cut out the flamingos as well as some of the other smaller elements in the stamp set. The main kit comes with other items as well. It comes with inks, it comes with teal Hero Arts pearls, it comes with some gems, some other things. So definitely check out the main kit online to see everything that's included. I'm gonna start with the first layer for the water that the flamingos are standing in, and I'm using some Hero Arts ink cubes to stamp that first layer. I really loved a bunch of teal and lime green and pink with this kit. The tropical vibe and then kind of the 80s vibe that went along with that, I thought was so much fun with the flamingos. Okay, so now I've stamped my second layer of the water and now I'm going for the first layer of the flamingos. Now the flamingos end up looking very detailed but I'm telling you this is so easy to do. So I started with those legs just so that it would be easier for me to pop the bodies on and make sure that the legs were going to sit in the water. So as far as just placement I thought it was easiest to start from the bottom and work my way up so that I was sure that the legs would end up in the water. Once I had the legs stamped, I put that first layer of the bodies on top and I decided to go with this layer that's like mostly filled in here, kind of a nice bright pink, but light enough that I would still be able to add another layer for the second layer of the body. You can see it's already so detailed. And then I thought it'd be fun to add a little bit of coral to the second layer because I don't know if you've seen flamingos kind of in areas where they tend to not just be pink, they kind of have that coral hue as well. So the second layer, again, super easy to line up because there is some white space around the beak areas and the legs kind of hook right into the bodies in certain areas. Now this layer is for those beaks and eyes. It's just a small layer that I stamped all in black. And again, I got it just right. It sits exactly where it's supposed to sit and I am not good at getting those things just right unless they're easy. So trust me, this is an easy one to put together, but look at it when it's done. It's so amazing that just for a couple of layers of stamps, you can get an image like this that is so detailed and beautiful. There are some really nice sentiments in this stamp set. So the one that I chose was stand tall darling. I thought that was such a nice message. And then I did stamp a cloud. I cut this image down so that I could mat it on some sort of peachish pink coral cardstock in the background and I called that one a day. I think it's so detailed it doesn't need much. These are the Lawn Ornaments fancy dies. You can see you get some a pinwheel, you get a flamingo, the flamingo leg, and the pinwheel uh, sticks as well as some grass. I decided to just work with the flamingo again because I'm really, I'm loving the flamingos in this set. So I cut out two of the legs. I think it's probably just supposed to be on the one, but I cut out two and I'm coloring them in with Artix markers. They're really juicy. They make it really easy to color in, even though I am not using my super friendly alcohol marker cardstock. I'm just using my regular Nina Solar White. I had no problems coloring those in and blending them out. I'm I'm going to use the same water stamp from that main kit stamp set, only this time I've turned my card to the vertical A2. So I'm just going to stamp the detail layer this time. I don't need that bottom layer too, but I am going to stamp it a couple of times with some Distress Oxide ink. I'm using Salvaged Patina. And then again, I start with one leg at least so that I know that the leg is going to end up standing in the water. And then I put the second leg and the body on and a couple of die cuts of grass surrounding it 
ornament. I know it's supposed to be a lawn ornament, but I liked adding it to the water here. For the white pearls that I have, I did add some to the water just to make it shiny a little bit, and then I added some droplets of those pearls as well. Don't forget, you'll get a teal bottle in your main kit, which I think is super cool, and I may try and grab that as well. Okay, the next is the Tropical Florals Fancy Dyes. Usually when I cut out dyes like that, I cut them out of either colorful cardstock or white cardstock and then color them in. This time I cut them out of colorful cardstock and now I'm stamping a stamp from one of the other stamp sets that says Aloha. I thought this was really nice. And again, here we go with that pink and then kind of the teal blue together with the white. Just a really fun 80s tropical vibe, which totally reminds me of my childhood. So I'm going to put some of these together in a nice little bouquet. And this was just kind of messing around. I have those longer flowers in the back there. And then most of the leaves, the monstera leaves and the other leaves I cut out of the green cardstock that I'm using. And I cut some flowers out of pink cardstock. Most stuff is glued down flat to the card, but I did pop some things up so that you have a little bit of interest with dimension. Mention. And then I have the Hero Arts gold pearls. So I thought these would look really nice as little accents around this card. Next up is the Monstera bundle. Now everybody is loving these plants these days. I am so bad at keeping plants so I have not even ventured into trying to have them as house plants but I did stamp this set with some Whisper Amalgam ink. It's just basically a light gray that is Copic friendly. So I'm going to use some Copic markers to color in all of these images but I am not going to stress too much about this Copic coloring. I'm going to obviously stay in the lines. I'm going to do a little bit of blending. I'm going to do a little bit of shading, but I'm not going to go too crazy because I left the stamps in my mini Misty so that I could stamp it again. I've showed this technique a probably a billion times. I love it because it takes some of the pressure off. You can still have fun with the shading and blending and try your hand at creating something that you like, but if it doesn't go 100% perfectly well, you are going to be saved by the next step of this. So I am doing just a little bit of blending, especially on the tips around the leaves, adding those darker and then bringing in that lighter color to blend out those harsh lines. Again, just some very basic blending, nothing too crazy. I am doing one leaf at a time. That is a tip if you have trouble blending things out. It may be you're trying to do too much at once and the marker is drying by the time you get to blend it out. So for the little guys, I'm not doing much of anything at all. I just wanted to put some color down on the frog and the little dragonfly and the little caterpillar. Okay, so now I've put the image back in my Misty and stamped it again, this time with Versamark ink after really, 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 really treating it with anti-static powder tool and then putting the embossing powder on top. So again, this is gonna save any boo-boos, any mess ups, anything that you didn't like the way it went in your coloring. This is really gonna save that because especially with gold, it just adds such a pretty shine to the outside of the image that it doesn't much matter what's going on inside side there. Okay, again, I'm layering some colors of cardstock, that lime green and the pink, and then I'm going to pop up my leaves on some foam tape, and then I'm going to pop everything up, but it's some stuff is going to go behind and some stuff is going to go on top. So we still have layers of dimension. The frog and the dragonfly are going to be closest to the viewer, and that leaf in the back is furthest away. And again, these pearls, I don't know if you've heard me talk about them before, but I am in love with the Hero Arts pearls. They kind out of the bottle so easily and they round out on their own without you doing any work. Next is the Birds of Paradise bundle and I was super excited about these. So this one I am going to try my hand at some regular old Copic coloring. I am not going to double stamp this or leave this in my Misty to get that gold edge. I'm going to really try to do a little bit of blending and shading. So what I did was I looked up a picture of a bird of paradise and I found my favorite one, which had like different colors in the flower and then the green in the leaves. And I thought that was so cool. So I went to try to mimic that as best I could. For the butterflies, I basically just colored them and gave them some 
darker edges on the top and brought that down. Okay, for the card, I drew from the card itself, from the image itself, the purples and the greens, and then I'm gonna pop up the Birds of Paradise. It has a really beautiful with deepest sympathy uh, sentiment in the stamp set, and I haven't done a sympathy card in a long time, so I thought this was the perfect situation to create one and it's just kind of a pretty card that can send a little message of love to someone. Next up is the large toucan bold prints. So this is a six by six cling mounted rubber stamp. So I am going to take the misty mouse pad out of my original size Misty, set that aside, and then I'm going to put the entire stamp into the original Misty, and I am stamping on a piece of watercolor cardstock, and I'm setting it with some anti-static powder tool and stamping it with Versa Fine Black Onyx ink. This way I can pour some clear embossing powder over the entire thing. I wasn't sure exactly how I was going to do this image, but I kind of thought maybe watercolor would be fun in one way or another. So I thought having those lines with the Versa Fine and the clear embossing powder might help. So I ended up deciding to do Arteza watercolor pencils with this. So I really didn't need the lines as much as I thought, but they are helpful. And I am going to do some basic coloring with a couple of colors and then use the Arteza brush uh, brushes to color, to blend those out with a little bit of water. So I do one area at a time, again, similar to the Copics. I don't want things getting dry, but I also, when I'm watercoloring, I don't want things to smudge into one another. So I'm trying to do areas that are not next to each other um, in a row. So I did all the leaves, a certain green, and then I'm doing these shaped flowers. I love the look of this stamp. It's so much fun. It kind of, again, reminds me of like an 80s, like a sticker that I would have collected or something like that. I'm showing my age now. Um, but it's, it's just a really fun image that you could have a lot of different mediums and use them with. So you could use markers, watercolors, uh, watercolor pencils like I'm doing here. You could even do a stamp heat resist with just a rainbow of colors instead of coloring in the image. When I was looking for some inspiration for coloring in this image, I looked up Toucan Clip Art. And that gave me an image and a color combination for the toucan, his feathers, his beak that I really liked. So that's an idea. Like if you're stuck, you know, just Google it and say, you know, bird of paradise and then get a real image or say something like clip art and get an image that might help you figure out what colors to use. Okay, I cut my image down to four by five and a quarter, matted it on some black cardstock. And now of course I'm adding some hero arts gold pearls because I absolutely love them. I'm going to add some white ones as well. I used one of the former stamp sets that we used to stamp Thinking of You and stamped and heat embossed it in white on black cardstock and now I'm going to pop that up. I did fussy cut the sentiment out and now I'm going to pop it up on some black foam squares right on the image to cover up a little boo-boo that I had. That's always a good thing for a sentiment to cover up a spot that you didn't like and I had so much fun coloring in in this image it was just such a blast I don't know about you but I love the flamingos and tropical vibes of this gorgeous card kit did any of these gorgeous tropical supplies make your wish list today I'd love to hear about it in the comments below if you'd like to see more kit reviews product reviews and card making tips tricks and techniques please like this video subscribe to my channel and don't forget to hit the bell so you can be notified every single time I have a new video available as always I want to thank you so much for spending time with me today please stay safe stay healthy and I'll see you again soon hi everyone <laughs> I just like sucked air <laughs> that kind of fell flat I was like yeah let me know <laughs> your wish wish Zzzz <laughs>